Welcome to part one of the HMS Valiant build-up. This is a 1350 scale model kit and it's built by a company called Academy and I believe they're based in Korea. Now I know it says HMS Warspite on the box and uh, I promise you that uh, I haven't lost my marbles just yet, not at the beginning of the build. Uh, you can ask my psychiatrist, he will agree with me, he's going to back me up 100% on that one. Um, <laughs> I would imagine halfway through the build um, I'm not going to be working on all four thrusters and by the time I get to the end of the build I would imagine I will definitely be one way short of a shipwreck. The reason I say that is that there is a lot of photo etch for this kit to uh, build up and um, put onto the model as well. The reason why uh, it does say HMS Warspite on the box is mainly because as far as I'm aware there are only two companies uh, that do the 1350 scale model kit and that is Academy and another company called Trumpeter and the ship itself can only be bought in two names and that's the HMS Queen Elizabeth and also the Warspite and the reason for that would be is that the uh, HMS Queen Elizabeth does take its name after the class of battleship and the HMS Warspite is the most heavily decorated uh, of the five sister ships and if the websites uh, that I've been looking at to uh, bring up some of the history of these ships is true then the HMS Warspite is also the most heavily decorated uh, ship or warship in British naval history. Now as I say I'm going to be building this as the HMS Valiant uh, the reason for that is that uh, it is the ship that my uh, maternal grandfather sailed on during the Second World War uh, I'm also uh, going to be building this and uh, giving it to my mother as a gift as soon as it was uh, her father that um, sailed on this ship. She does know that um, she's getting the model but what my mum doesn't know is the fact that um, I've collated all the information in regards to this ship and I'm going to be putting that into a book and all of the uh, updates on this I'm going to be putting onto DVD as well. Uh, so if you do see my mum uh, walking down the street, don't let on that you know that she's getting the book and the DVDs, because that needs to be a surprise. Um, so mum's the word on that one. Now with this particular kit, as I say, there is a lot of photo etch in there. Uh, there's also uh, wooden decks for this as well, which is absolutely fantastic. So that will actually help uh, make the ship look a little bit more realistic. I've also got some 1350 scale Arsenal uh, figures that I'm going to be putting on this. Personally, if you ask me, I think the uh, Arsenal figures are the best uh, figures out there in 1350 scale uh, because they are completely 3D and there are so much detail on those, it is unbelievable how they actually managed to uh, make them, really, to be fair. I will put a link. Uh, to the website uh, on the comment section of this just in case anybody does uh, want to take a look at them um, but if you're building a 1350 ship or, or even if it's uh, the Enterprise refit uh, or, or any other type of uh, warship that's in 1350 scale those figures would look absolutely fantastic on them and it would just really sort of help to give them uh, give the ships uh, a kind of a more realistic look rather than looking like the Mary Celeste. Uh, this is also going to be going on the seascape as well which is going to be a first for me too. So that's going to be quite good fun doing that. Um, this also needs to be done as a waterline so um, I am going to need to start cutting up the hole which is going to be a bit scary really. Uh, but there you go. Uh, in for a penny, in for a pound I say. So what we do is we will get the uh, the model unboxed and um, we'll take a look at the parts so if you bear with me for a second I will get the camera reset up and I will uh, see you in a second okay, so we got the uh, the boxes uh, unpacked it's a bit like a, a Russian doll really uh, we've got this big uh, this is the outer box that you've seen um, but it acts as a sleeve and then on the inside you've then got this uh, the, the actual proper lid of the box <clears> this <throat> has got a really good painting of uh, the ship uh, on the high seas firing its big guns and then you've also got around the outside of the box uh, various little pictures 
uh, of the ship. And then on this side we've also got uh, a little hologram, which is kind of cool. Uh, and then after that we've got the uh, protector for the parts as well, uh, which again uh, has got a picture of the ship on it, which is quite good. Um, so if we just take that out of the way, we're then into the box. Now I'm not going to take the parts out of their wrappers uh, because I'm not quite ready to, to actually deal with this model. And because some of the parts are really small, I don't, you know, I, I fear losing them to be quite honest. But what we do is we can take out the parts that are in this box because they are in their own, sorry, out of this bag because they are in their own separate little bags. This is the wooden decking, and you can see there the uh, the level of detail that we've got on that, uh, which is quite fantastic. Uh, and we do have two parts on there. We've got the the bow section. Then uh, this is the middle of the ship, and then underneath this one we've got the uh, the stern section. And then we've also got in there. I'm not sure whether we're going to see this properly. There we go. We've got, I do believe that these are actually cranes in there. And then this black bit down here is the chains uh, for the anchors, which is kind of cool. Uh, and then if we dive into the box again, we've got the decals there. So we've got uh, the Union Jack and the George Cross uh, and uh, a few other little decals there. And then on the other side, we've also got the waterline uh, decals as well. And then if we go into these little bags here, in here you'll see that we've got, I do believe that these form part of the masts uh, for the ship and other little various areas around there that need to be uh, need to be done. And then in this bag we've got the uh, brass 15-inch uh, cannons and then we got the, some smaller cannons and I do believe that these little ones might be the two pounders, I'm not sure. Uh, we'd need to have a look at that on the instructions. And then in this bag as well we come to the main photo etch. Um, so that's what that's looking like. There is quite a bit of photo etch in there and then that's uh, another set of photo etch and some of this has actually got some raised detail on it as well. It's actually pre-bent by the looks of it which is quite good. So I think I'm going to have lots of fun in cutting out all of those little bits of uh, photo etch and then adding them to the kit. I think there's going to be many uh, a laborious hour uh, doing that. And then inside this bag we've also got four sets of instructions. Now with the main instructions um, Sorry, this is just the parts uh, location. So it does actually give you uh, the sprue letters. And then it tells you uh, the number of the parts that are actually on the sprues as well. And then on the other side, we've got the, uh, the painting instructions as well. And it also tells you uh, exactly where you need to put the decals as well, which is quite good. And then we've basically got two coloured um, instruction sheets. <clears throat> and these are basically just for the photo edge. I mean, if we go down, uh, if we can get quite close to that, you can actually see there uh, the amount of photo etch that has to be added to this kit. I mean, it is just uh, mind-numbingly gobsmacking how much photo etch there is just on those two parts of the kit. And then the other coloured instruction again <coughs> gives us some more uh, photo etch placement which is quite good. And then on the other side um, it gives us a complete list of all of the um, photo etch parts and the uh, brass parts as well. And then we come on to the uh, the main instructions for the ship itself. Now this has got 14 
um, parts to the instructions. And at first glance, you think, oh, there's only 14 parts on this. But then you actually start to look at what you've got to do uh, on those uh, parts and how many parts fit within that one particular uh, instruction. Like if you look at number eight there, that looks fairly complicated. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty good, pretty good. And then it also gives you all the colours that you need as well and whatnot. So these these instructions are very well um, done, to be quite honest. There's there's a lot of detail on these. And um, this is a kind of a, a concertina as well. It kind, of, it kind of folds out just like that, really. So that's, that's why I say that I'm most probably going to be losing my mind by the time I get to the end of this build because of the amount of photo etch that needs to be done and how small some of that photo etch actually really is. So if we get those back in the bag before we lose them and then we get these parts in the bag as well. Last thing I want to do is start losing these parts to be quite honest they wouldn't be uh, that cheap to replace and I'm not sure whether I'd be able to get the same quality from aftermarket kits as well so let's put those back in and just do that bag up okay so that's that done okay so here is the main hull of the ship um, as you can see it is fairly big it's about 55 centimeters in length once it's fully built uh, sorry fully built put my teeth back in again and it's going to be uh, I do believe about uh, nine centimeters in width now as I say I'm going to be doing this uh, on a seascape so I'm going to need to find the water line on this ship um, and cut it off I can't actually see through this bag any markings on the inside which would suggest to me where the water line is uh, I can't actually see um, anything on the instructions as well which would tell me where the waterline is on this kit. So I think I'm going to need to do uh, some research into that myself. Uh, if I can't find anything then I'm not going to tempt fate and try and cut it myself. What I'll do is I'll just make the seascape that little bit deeper um, and put the whole ship in. So that's the hull. Uh, and then we come to the other parts, which uh, are the decks of the ship. Uh, so we've got the um, forward section there, the bow, should I say. Then we've got the midsection, and then we've also got the, um, the stern. Then as you can see there, we've got a little nameplate for uh, the HMS Wars by It does say Queen Elizabeth class up there. That's a fairly nice plaque in itself, to be quite honest. The only thing that really does my head in is the fact that it's got 1350 scale on there. You don't really need that on there, to be quite honest. But, as I say, I'm not going to be using that plaque anyway. Um, and then if we turn this over, <coughs> you'll see some more parts of... Um, I do believe these are sidewalls for the side of the superstructure. And then we've also got that bit there, I do believe is part of the superstructure as well. And then, as you can see, if you look there, we've got some really, really tiny parts in there as well that need to be dealt with. These chains won't be used because we've got the, uh, the black metal chains. So the good thing is, some of these parts will be replaced, like this bit as well. Um, so those little parts can go into my parts bin, and you never know, they might become useful at one stage um, when I do a scratch build. Okay, on the next sprue, uh, we've got some more of the superstructure around as well. And then we've got some more incredibly um, small pieces as well. And one of the other good things that I have noticed about this is looking at every single section of this ship so far, I have not seen um, any flash on any of the parts. So that really is good news as far as I'm concerned. Because the last thing that I'm going to want to be doing, especially with parts that are kind of this small and this fiddly, uh, <coughs> is sitting there and trying to, um, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, trying to sand off all the um, flashing. 
And then here's the next one. And again, we've got some, uh, well, we've got the guns there. Uh, we've also got the propellers there. It's a shame uh, we haven't got brass propellers for this. But, you know, if you were to just display it, you could actually do that in L-clad brass. And uh, I would imagine that would be okay. Um, so again, there's just all sorts of very small sort of detail parts around. And there we've actually got the, the plastic barrels that are going to be replaced. Um, I mean, there's nothing wrong with those, actually, to be quite honest, the detail on them. There's nothing wrong with those. But I do believe that the uh, the brass barrels are going to look a lot better, plus the fact the uh, the ends of them um, are actually hollowed out a lot further on those. I'm not sure whether these two parts here, because uh, you've got that one there and then also the same one underneath, I'm not sure whether that's actually part of the model kit itself or whether it's part of the stand. I think they might be part of the stand along with those two parts there, but I, I'm just not sure really until I really get into the instructions on this. And then we've also got uh, two parts of the crane there. Um, and again, that's being replaced by the photo edge. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. So let's get the final uh, bag out. And on this one, um, you can see uh, down the bottom there, we've actually got uh, the two wings for the biplanes. Uh, we've also got a load of little boats as well that need to go onto the model kit. And uh, there's two parts of the aeroplanes there as well. And then as you can see, we've got some really, especially up here, we've got some really, really tiny um, parts that we need to fit on. Uh, again, obviously not really too sure where they are or where they're going to be going on the ship. And then, again, we've got some really small parts here as well. I do believe um, they're actually the propellers uh, for the little biplanes. Um, with the biplanes, I won't be putting them on there because uh, I do believe, looking at the photographs that I've seen of the Valiant uh, for 1942, uh, she was without planes. I'm not sure why that would be. I know that they did do a refit um, on the ship just before the Second World War, uh, which did add a lot more weight to her because they did put anti-torpedo bulges on the sides. Uh, and I know that would have added to the gross tonnage and it also slowed the ship down by 0.5 knots as well. It went from a total speed, a top speed of uh, 24 knots to uh, 23.5 whatever that is in miles per hour I'm not actually sure to be quite honest um, but there's quite a few parts in the kit there and then we've also got the base itself um, and as I say this won't be used so that will um, just sit in the box that go in my parts box um, I could use that stand for something else I mean all I'd really need to do is just fill in that hole really but that's about it for the model kit uh, I'm not sure how many parts there are on this uh, to be quite honest, but I, it wouldn't surprise me if in total with all of the parts on the plastic uh, the plastic parts and all of the brass parts that we've got somewhere around sort of maybe 800 parts to do could be slightly higher than that, I'm not sure don't think I'm going to count them though as I do it because I don't really want to send myself that mad but that's the, uh, that's the ship as she is at the moment so I'm going to carry on. The first part that I'm going to get done to this is actually the uh, the hull. Um, I think that's going to be the best place to start off with, really. I mean, even the instructions say you start with the hull. Uh, and then you just sort of work your way up the superstructure. So I think with this particular build, I am going to be following the instructions um, fairly carefully. And as I say, I just need to try and find information to uh, see if I can actually do the waterline version on this and find the cut line or uh, whether I actually need to um, just make the hole for the base a bit bigger to, to sink it down into. So that's going to be about it for the moment. Uh, I will come back to you in part two where hopefully I've uh, managed to get some work done to the hole. So until then, thanks for watching and please do take care.